Radhe Radhe Sandhya, Radhe Radhe everyone, uh, good morning, good evening to you. I request you to pay heed to Sandhya's request. So let's get started. Uh, hope you had a wonderful weekend and enjoyed your little break. Had a great Holi as well. Uh, we certainly had a great Holi here. I'll show you some pictures out of it. Uh, and I'm excited to be back, back to the sessions and uh, Sincerely hope the feeling is mutual from your side as well. And uh, uh, we'll get started. We will continue our discussion. Today we'll get a little analytical uh, around some of the discussion that we are having around anger management. We'll look at some examples and we will go through a framework. And the discussion is going to be around how we can apply that framework to the situations that we have in life. And uh, do we think that framework is relatable, something which can be put to practice um, with continued um, practice, of course, right? That is what is needed. So we'll look at different aspects of it. Now let's get started with our shloka and then we'll get deeper into our discussion today. So let me share my screen and we should get started. All right, are you able to see my screen? Okay, good. Audio is good, I hope. All right, nice. Yes. So let's get started with our opening prayers. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwaraha, Guru Sakshat Parabrahma, Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha, Vasudeva Sutam Devam, Kamsa Chanur Mardanam Devaki Paramanandam Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum Radhe Radhe, good morning, good evening once again, everyone. So let's get started with our Shloka 2.63 that we've been having. Today we'll conclude this conversation. We'll keep revisiting this topic. Um, like I said, like any other Bhagavad Gita shloka, the more we get into the shloka, the more we take out of it. And every time you go through the same shloka, there's always something new that comes up. That is the beauty of divine knowledge. It's not static knowledge. It is not insentient knowledge. It is sentient knowledge. That means there is no limit to the amount of learnings you can take from a particular shloka. So it's like if you get a feeling, been there, heard it, understood it, no. No matter how much you keep on hearing it, you will keep on getting something new out of it. Okay, that is the beauty of Bhagavad Gita. It's just like your vessel. If your vessel is this much, you will take this much water from the sea. If it becomes this much, it will increase. If it becomes this much, and that vessel keeps on expanding as we read more and more, as we gain on getting more and more clarity. So let's get started uh, on this particular shloka. I'm going to recite it and we'll pick up a few participants to recite afterwards. Maybe a few uh, because we have a lot to discuss and today you'll have to wear your analytical hats on as well. Okay, we'll get into some graphs and stuff like that. All right. Krodhat bhavati sammoha Sammohat smriti vibhramaha Smriti Bhanshad Buddhi Nasho Buddhi Nashat Pranashati. All right, let's take a few participants. Uh, Radhe Radhe Rupaji. Radhe Radhe Rupaji. Radhe Radhe Radhe. Krodha Bhavati Sammoha. Sammohatmati vibramaha, smriti brancha buddhi nasho, buddhi nasha pranashati. Wonderful, Rupaji. Very nice. Yes. Radhe Radhe Ashutoshi. Radhe Radhe. Krodha Dhavati Sammoha. Sammoha smriti vibhramaha, smriti bransad buddhi naso, buddhi nasad pranasyati. Very nice, Ashutoshi. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe Riyaji. Radhe Radhe. 
राधे क्रोधा भवति सम्मोह सम्मोह स्मृति विभ्रम स्मृति भ्रंशा बुद्धिनाशो बुद्धिनाशा प्रणश्यति राधे 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 राहुल जी राधे 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 राहुल क्रोधा सम्मोह सम्मोह स्मृति विभ्रम स्मृति भ्रंशा बुद्धिनाशो बुद्धिनाशत प्रणश्यति राधे राधे वंडरफुल वेरी नाइस राहुल राधे राधे शाली जी राधे राधे नितिन जी राधे राधे क्रोधा सम्मोह सम्मोह स्मृति विभ्रम स्मृति भ्रंशा बुद्धिनाश बुद्धिनाशा प्रणश्यति वेरी नाइस शाली जी ओके वी कैन टेक वन मोर हैंड मे बी टू मोर एंड देन वी गेट स्टार्टेड इफ वी हैव वन मोर वी कैन टेक वन मोर राधे राधे श्याम जी राधे राधे क्रोधा सम्मोह सम्मोह स्मृति विभ्रम स्मृति भ्रंशा बुद्धिनाशो बुद्धिनाशा प्रणश्य राधे 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 वेरी नाइस श्याम जी सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड सो द श्लोक सीज एंगर लीड्स टू ओके तेजस्वी जी लेट्स टेक द लास्ट हैंड देन राधे राधे तेजस्वी जी राधे राधे सम्मोह सम्मोह स्मृति विभ्रम स्मृति भ्रंशा बुद्धिनाशो बुद्धिनाशा प्रणश्यति वंडरफुल ऑल राइट सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड इट सेज एंगर लीड्स टू क्लाउडिंग ऑफ जजमेंट व्हिच रिजल्ट्स इन बिवल्डरमेंट ऑफ द मेमोरी व्हेन द मेमोरी इज बिवल्डर्ड द इंटेलेक्ट गेट्स डिस्ट्रॉयड एंड व्हेन द इंटेलेक्ट इज डिस्ट्रॉयड one is ruined okay so it talks about clouding okay there is another type of clouding i am going to show you before we get into that shloka okay so this is a clouding color clouding as you see okay so this is how we celebrated holi it was a phenomenal event here at talis right god guru says that um, like swami ji was once telling me <clears throat> if you have to ever test god and guru their presence okay and they say that god is we have to deepen this understanding uh, and that belief and the conviction that god is with us and god is our protector both protector and our witness now the easy test to test uh, presence of god and guru how they help us secretly they are actually serving us we think we are doing their seva they are actually serving us is to take on something which is beyond way beyond your ability and put in your 100% and when that thing will get done you will realize it was not you and this was a testimony we have a like wonderful team of volunteers of course but when you look at some of the scale of the events that are done by radha krishna of temple of dallas you would think it's a huge army of volunteers believe me you know it's it's a handful of people who pull off these kind of events so amazing amazing and the turnout was beyond expectations it was an electric event and um, just phenomenal okay the turnout the response and how it all worked out things just fall in place all you know you just put in your efforts uh, we did a little bit but we have such a wonderful team that you know who have devoted their lives and time they i mean it was a phenomenal event and it's a good way to get associated with temple at the cause and and more people they get associated with the temple you know when if they start off with some celebrations like holi diwali or any festival like god says yen kain prakar it so whatever becomes a medium means for you to get associated with something you never know what it like so it was a very phenomenal event uh, we had harry anand who gave uh, you know he's for him his guru seva is based on whatever skills he has he utilizes it like it was a charity event so he brought in his uh, friends and in true which included shamli gurpade as well by the way she was she was she gave a rock star performance here also in houston and it turned out to be a, a really great event and it it's only going to get better with time and uh, 
so this this is just a picture you can go and check in facebook there's a videos and they are pretty awesome okay go check it out on facebook of radha krishna temple you'll see some amazing pictures and videos to see how that event turned out and then i had the fortune to meet some of our participants i said it would be worth calling them out so as you can see let me put the names as well i met uh, our co-host sandhya as you can see so we played holi we got a chance to play holi um then uh, we met nanik nanik bhai uh, in houston if you are there nanik bhai uh, it was a pleasure meeting you uh, met him on uh, one of the stalls that we were having and then uh, of course harry anand ji right so i we got the privilege to meet him in person as well so i just picked up a few pictures uh, and mohit ji who takes the balmukund session or balmukund bhagavad gita session for kids and then uh, devis are uh, uh yoga instructor amazing yoga instructor and ajay you all know he does our mind management and more recently he's doing uh, the parenting sessions as well yes sham ji had a question radhe 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 nitin bhai this is not fair aap sab log you are all the dallas and enjoying so much and we india we have no clue what is happening there are you teasing us or you want us to come there settle there i do not know what we want to do please I'm help us like come over and at least meet us in family camps and stuff that you can do um and yeah if you can come and settle here nothing like it okay we have a road map defined for the next uh, 20 30 years for as long as we live hopefully health permitting i don't know but yeah it's there is never a dull moment here in dallas like swami ji has given us this beautiful gift of a temple and it's just going leaps and bounds you know going from step i mean i have i have met people i've seen people who say it takes decades you know for temples to flourish like this but i have seen this journey right from inception all the way up to it's like barely 4 years and the kind of scale of events and things that happen they are you know you just have to see it to believe it amazing and it is all god and guru's grace i can see that in action because uh, uh it's 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 you can feel that it, you can feel well, let me know the best way to settle there come there <laughs> otherwise if <laughs> i will keep bothering you now and then you just keep bothering to, you you just have to make a wish and uh, it will happen trust me somehow it will happen but i would strongly encourage you to at least see or seek out opportunities where you can at least participate in events like family camp or otherwise uh, attend some of the retreats that swami ji has but yeah it was a pretty amazing event and we we continue having it throughout the year so i was joking around people say thank god it's friday sometimes we have more events over the weekend so we say thank god it's monday okay because <laughs> then you can get back to your routine just too much here but it's uh, the good thing is um your mind gets productively engaged throughout otherwise what will happen the anger will come okay. and that is what we are going to talk about today so let's get to the topic today i thought i'd show you a few glimpses uh, let's get to the topic for today nanik ji by the way it was really great to meet you in person uh, let's get started with our session now all right so we spoke about anger i'll do a quick recap and then we'll get into some analytics uh, today like i said uh, we'll try to dissect this whole thing and come up with a framework which can help us so these are the different anarthas that we have and anger is not one of one of the many anarthas but the most uh, strongest or powerful anartha that we have to deal with it is called senapati of maya maya wields its power on us through this senapati and we are we are basically powerless in front of this senapati that much power it wields on all of us we are actually subservient servant of anger because anger calls us on its own will the day we start becoming better at it then we can say that anger is our servant but that is a very high stage where we can call upon anger at our will when we need it just think of that state so that is the whole idea and uh, yeah and it is it is a you know one of the things that can really dirty your mind in no time right you can regret later on but then the damage has already happened and beyond that it's only damage control from that point onwards so this talks about the clouding of intellect and it is like driving with a misty windshield with where we don't have clarity so this whole cycle when intellect gets clouded memory gets bewildered um and then the 
person lose its discriminatory power and then just flow with the surge of emotions. So this is how the cycle goes. Eventually, it leads to ruin. Okay, so let's proceed further and build on this discussion today. We also spoke about the, the whole process. It's a very important process where repetitive thoughts lead to attachment, which in turn leads to forming of neural networks. And that attachment leads to either leads to the object that we are desiring or getting attached to. If that happens, it leads to greed. If it doesn't happen, that leads to anger. So anger is nothing but an offshoot or a son of attachment. It is born out of attachment. Or if you want to go a little back, repetitive thought or a desire as well. Okay. So, but when the anger is there, you have to have its mother attachment as well. And that leads to fear. Another emotion that comes is fear because you have an attachment to somebody, strong attachment, and now you have that fear that that object of my attachment will be snatched away. If you think deeper, even about this fear, you're thinking that your happiness that you are supposed to get from that object will be obstructed. So there is a selfishness at play even there, if you think deeply about it. Okay, that is what fear, where fear comes from as well. So that, and then attachment is the root cause. Anger is a symptom. Now uh, these, these emotions, attachment, raga, duesh, they also come from attachment and which is aversion, hankering, you can map it to greed and anger because aversion is, we just don't want to see something or avoid something. And then the greed aspect is obviously the raga aspect, the hankering aspect of it. So this is what we had discussed, the whole cycle, how anger comes. So if, if anger comes, there has to be some kind of an attachment, root cause has to be there. We just have to have an awareness, mindfulness around it. Okay, so now let's look at it. Anger, if we look at it in X, Y, uh, X, we plot it, right? Anger is reducing to going to the positive, increasing. And then you talk about judgment on the Y axis, right? So this is how the graph would go. As your anger increases, your judgment decreases. That's essentially what Lord Krishna is telling us. Okay. Conversely, your opportunity or your uh, uh, odds of bettering your judgment would require an absence of anger. You cannot be angry and developing a good judgment at the same time. Both cannot go hand in hand. It is mutually exclusive. I'm angry and I'm able to think clearly. No, not possible. Right? Can you, can you um, um, laugh without your cheeks getting puffed? All right. Same same way, you cannot have a good judgment um, in the presence of anger. No, not possible. That's the first rule that uh, Lord Krishna is talking about in this particular one. Second, if you look at the memory, do you get a good memory when you are angry? Yeah, you start replaying the things which hurt you. Right. In, in that sense, your memory gets activated, but then you lose count of things, the good things that happen. You lo lose respect for the person. You lose sanity that, you know, my act uh, could make me do something which I may regret later. All that goes for a toss. That's the second thing. Right. So same thing. If your anger increases, your mem memory starts fading away. Now all you care for is venting out that anger or trying to dig more reasons to get angry. Because now you are getting into that loop of your mind is telling, I deserve to vent it out. And then you will find more stories, more reasons to justify it. Right? The same kind of a relationship. The third one, the intellect is your ability to discern something. Same pattern. So you cannot think clearly when your judgment goes for a toss, both of these. So your intellect, which is called Vivek in Hindi, it goes for a toss as well. And only when you have, it's actually negative. There is a typo, it should be minus towards the end, okay? Not positive. So if your ability to discern will decrease if you are angry and same kind of a relationship here as well, it increases in the absence of anger. Now, uh, I was, uh, you know, I was reading uh, this, uh, this one of the uh, articles on um, MS Dhoni one of the guys was asking him, what is the success? What is the mantra to your success uh, with regards to, you know, you're called Captain Cool. 
when everybody around you is getting panicked how do you keep your cool so his answer was very interesting he said that uh, i just remain where i am okay i i don't have to become better at that moment i just stay where i am okay now think about it let's let's look at it here now let's say you have an adversary in front of you right a person that you are having an altercation with and that person has become angry so he has already re- lowered his game right so this person is operating at this level okay this level super anger judgment has gone for a to- toss memory all the drills that they have done you know where to ball how to ball where to set the field all that has started fading away because you are panicking and your abilities but if somebody just stays where they were let's say they were here they've already gained an advantage if you are able to think clearly you don't even have to raise your game you were where you were but the other person has lowered his game so now you have an advantage already an advantage if you are somehow able to bring in a pause and do something about it you know become better at managing your anger isn't it a huge advantage already and if you are let's say you are in a better situation than that you are able to think and raise your game even better that is the next level but just by staying where you are you have gained a de facto advantage and that's exactly what dhoni is saying which i found very interesting he said i just have to remain where i am maybe he has practiced it so many times in his head like swami ji beautifully explains when exceptional situations come you can do things that what you do in ordinary circumstances you don't do something exceptional all of a sudden you pull it out of your hat very rare you do things which you have already practiced when the times are normal so this is a very interesting thing so let's say you have an altercation or altercation with a, a person or some kind of an argument you get into if you can retain your cool or at least relatively better cool than the other person you have already gained advantage in all the three aspects that lord krishna is talking about judgment memory and the intellect the ability to discern and think and you can actually try it next time a person starts getting mad at you you think clearly now don't tick him off by smiling but just look at that situation objectively and process the information and respond taking your time it's a huge advantage huge advantage for sure so lord krishna is actually telling all the three things as we uh, you know as we were discussing now furthermore let's go further now humans versus what are humans how do humans what are humans endowed with intellect okay that is the thing that differentiates us from the other species so that is the advantage uh, natural advantage we get by uh, being born in this this species it hits us hard right we think we have a sense of entitlement we are humans we'll always be human no that's not the case as scriptures tell us not not necessarily but the good thing is that uh, we are endowed with discerning ability which is called intellect and because of that discerning ability we can make choices we are not scripted okay i'll tell you the difference now at every moment we can make choice obviously a lot of it is driven by our gunas and sanskars but through our free will we have a power to override it does a plant or an animal have that power they don't okay some science part says okay some animals have some emotional and all that stuff is fine but let's say uh, a plant is a, a lemon tree so will the lemon just to have fun grow orange one day okay my mood changed today so i gave orange will it happen no it will obey the script that nature has endowed it with brahma ji has endowed it with or for that matter if uh, let's say a tiger or a lion is hungry and all of a sudden it's it's not finding the deer and it sees a human and it goes ahead and eats it will the lion or the tiger be able to discern that it's human okay that's not my food i'll i'll just fast for a bit okay ekadashi or whatever but i will not eat that human will they think that no way they are scripted they will go by their instinct so they are scripted that is why these yonis are called bhog yonis 
including swarglok also swarglok also uh, you cannot do anything uh, because uh, they are all called bhog yonis you simply reap the rewards for what you have done in these yonis you you basically uh, uh, enjoy or lack of enjoyment whatever you may want to call it go with whatever is in doubt to you you cannot add plus or minus anything so intellect is the key thing that differentiates humans from the other species and if the first quadrant that we start with that is where the humans they belong yeah and you can say second quadrant as well i mean people who who do not have highly developed vivek so to say vivek i am talking more in spiritual sense not in material sense right material vivek doesn't count for anything actually uh, so harnessing the power of our intellect that can vary like saints will have the highest i won't say they will have the highest they are born with the highest because they are already a dandy and then some people like uh, us basically i should say me not us maybe some of you have already reached there work in progress so that fall in second quadrant and the third quadrant as you can see a happy family of animals and fourth quadrant i don't know if it exists but scientists say that so i have included it okay some of the species they say they have some kind of an intellect okay might be debatable but that's fine they still don't have it to an extent which humans have and that is why humans are called humans okay. now when the anger comes this happens we are into one of this because now we have given up the gift that god has given us okay for that moment we give it up and we actually downgrade ourselves to the species there is absolutely no difference between us and animals and not just the good natured animals the angry animals okay who are willing to attack that that is how we downgrade ourselves in a flash of a moment that is that is how anger is that is our anger concept okay so this is another way of looking at it basically we are falling down to the level of animals when we get angry or upset is absolutely no difference at that point okay now if if an animal gets angry or i mean hungry it is hungry and it eats a, a human will it be counted as a karma right yeah when the yamaraj or you know jit chitrugupt he takes them and says i i am opening up your account for most part of your life you ate deers but you know on one that particular day you ate an human so that is your bad karma will it happen no it will not happen because they are going by the script that they have right they are supposed to be ferocious they are supposed to cater to their stomach alone they are not endowed with intellect so it is acceptable however if a human goes and kills a tiger and makes a burger out of it and eats it will it count oh, there is a tiger burger okay by the way I, there was a restaurant which is kind of interesting but uh, yeah it can happen then it will be counted as a sin because humans are supposed to go by certain rules there was a reason why intellect was given to the humans okay if we, if food was the only thing and establishing establishing ourselves at the top of the food chain was the only goal of life then god god would have given us a gold medal wonderful thing you did but no he'll say no you didn't do you know justice to uh, the fact that you were given a special power so that is how it goes now let's get into a framework okay let's talk about this um um and see if if the situations that we deal with fall into it or not so it's basically related to anger management and i think a lot of people can relate to it let's say it's a very important relationship that you are dealing with let's start with that so let's take the worst situation not not an all right situation where you know you have a way out or who cares or i can get my way with this person let's say you are dealing with a very important relationship that you care for it could be a friend it could be your child it could be a spouse which a lot of people will say yeah immediately that person will come into your mind right so you are dealing with and uh, you have to deal with anger in that situation okay so let's look at a will will flow uh, form a flow chart kind of a deal uh, it may not be all inclusive but kind of covers most part of it so now in that particular relationship can we do something about it right if let's say your interest is impeded or the other person is impeded and you get into an argument 
or you get into a fight can you do something about it and that's the first thing to start off with okay. and if the answer is yes we spoke about all the three concepts express suppress or process anger you have all the three options available if you can do something about it and then also in express also we spoke about the concept it flows top down right then important person could be the boss in your life as well can you vent it out no you will not that means you can use a silent faculty there smart faculty which guides us okay it's okay to do it now it's not okay to do it now so express also is something which is very nicely controlled by something within us as well but yeah at least you have a choice to express it there suppress that choice is there as well uh, you can suppress it um, okay it's not worth it or maybe it'll pass away whatever and then the process part is there as well you can process the anger and say okay this is how i can respond to it because you think you can do something about it right the serenity player having an ability and knowing that i have the ability to do something about it so let me as well exercise that option so all three options are available now let's say you don't have you can't do anything about it but can you draw healthy boundaries in that sense can we do at least something about it okay maybe have an assertive put your foot down and say let's have some healthy boundaries around it so that we can avoid this showdown which can sap us down or wear us down that's the second thing we can ask ourselves if the answer is yes will it fix the issue once and for all no it has to be an ongoing expectation management you may draw boundaries but you know osmosis you know everybody tries to expand your boundaries like in management they say push the envelope so you will not realize when the envelope will start getting pushed and then it's an ongoing expectation management okay if two people are on the same page and both are sufficiently mature it may be a one one time deal but it could be an ongoing expectation management as well uh, not just a one time deal but let's say you can't even draw healthy boundaries in that particular relationship right there is a very nice lecture from swami ji he was talking about the need to have healthy boundaries in every relationship okay that will help not only you to preserve your self esteem which we hold so dear to ourselves but also help you keep sane and not wear you down with so much of noise in life that that really doesn't add much value so then like this next question can we draw healthy boundaries even if in our body he gave a very beautiful analogy he said even in our body our organs have a very healthy boundary with each other if our liver says okay let me have a potluck with stomach today then it will get dissolved in it okay so they don't mingle just like that there are very nice boundaries otherwise the the acid that is produced in our stomach to digest stuff it can dissolve all of our organs so even they follow boundaries and that is needed in every relationship you have that healthy see it's a trade off right it's a give and take and it has to be a healthy give and take that credit balance has to be maintained over time for the relationship to flourish otherwise it's just a matter of time before it collapses and that is where those healthy boundaries if if we can talk with the other person like an adult does help but it's possible that one of the person is not yet an adult or a baby adult or maybe a toddler to begin with then you know this this model can collapse as well so let's say we cannot draw healthy boundaries then third part is it within our endurance limits okay we can't draw healthy boundaries we can't do anything about it then what you can't cure you endure but then the question is how much how much you can endure now if the is it within your endurance limit so basically it goes back to the same discussion are we willing to pay the price for it it is within it's within our budget maybe yes i mean that's fine you accept it as part of our life it used to happen and it happens every in everyday life you know a lot of people can relate to it where you keep pushing your endurance limits as well right you might be thinking something from within but saying all right chalta hai we somehow to got to manage it for whatever things right for the sake of relationship for the sake larger picture in mind for the sake of families for the sake of kids so many so many factors come into play um so if the question answer is yes then again you have to do an ongoing endurance management now right your endurance would also wither away after a while and you or you may keep on increasing your endurance that is also a possibility so that is again there and if no 
then increase endurance obviously you have to increase endurance if the answer is no if it's not because you can't do anything about it you can't draw boundaries and it's not even with your endurance limits then you keep in increasing your endurance now the good thing is with any of these options any of these options there's a way out now if you look at it from an increasing difficulty standpoint this is the level it goes the first one is easy because at least you can do something about it right a little more tougher is where you have to do a management, you know, expectation management, because at least the person is open to a dialogue where you can draw some healthy boundaries. So that becomes slightly difficult, but still better than managing your endurance, you know, from time to time where it can go up and down. The last one is the most difficult one. So this is a problem. Then what do we do about it? So the thing is, there are cures for it. We spoke about anger being the symptom of a larger problem, attachment. Now, if you have an infection, what is a symptom of an infection? You will have a fever. So, in order to cure fever, you will need crocin, Advil, paracetamol, all those antipyretics, antipyretics, yeah, as they say, which can bring down the fever. But fixing the fever, will it fix the problem? No, but it helps cope with it. If you have some work to do, you bring down your fever, at least you can get back to work. So symptomatic cure is good. It helps. And the good thing about symptomatic cure is then you can start building a mindset around it. In this case, it's not like you start popping in a pill every time, but these pills are actually helpful pills that we are going to talk about uh, in, 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 with regards to managing anger. And when you start even implementing the symptomatic cures, that can become a mindset and it can really become our second nature in long run. So let's look at some of the symptomatic cures. And then I want to touch upon the long-term or the root cause cures as well. Both of these we'll talk about. Where you are actually removing the source of the problem itself very, very systematically. And that's where spiritual technology comes into picture. But let's talk about symptomatic cures as a lot of self-help books and our day-to-day -day experiences would tell you. Okay? Just briefly touch upon that. Introducing a gap, as you know, there's a difference between you don't have to, you're not obliged to respond to everything. Introduce a gap. Okay, let me postpone getting angry. Fine, I'll get angry tomorrow. Just in, or maybe just introduce slight gap. All right, something is happening. Am I obliged to respond? No. There was a beautiful story of two dogs, right? They were supposed to go from one city to another. And uh, one of the dogs, uh, when they were going, like, you know, if in India, when the dogs go, the dogs are very territorial. So another dog, uh, the, the group of dogs came and they started by barking at him. And one of the dog was, okay, game on. How dare he challenged me on the way. And he started picking up battles with all those dogs, right? And then from one dog to another and next place, another dog. So he kept on picking up the battles with everybody because he thought he's obliged to respond because they're barking at him. The second one, he kept on moving. He said, forget it. I'm going to choose my battles. Who do you think reached? before you know the, the goal where they were supposed to go obviously the one who did not pick up any fights you were very focused where i'm going so our lives there's a goal god did not send us here to pick up battles with people around and to fix them there'll be a lot of people uh, who we will have problems with if we fix them if we vent our ego we and we are able to have our way was it really good for us god is going to get very impressed wow what a wonderful job you did through your arguments and through your you know whatever techniques you could employ you actually fixed everything no it's not going to really help so if we are focused about our goal then these kind of noise or distraction should not really happen so it just becomes like the other dog where you pick on fight you you pick every battle that comes your way no it's probably not needed so that introducing a gap is very important. That's symptomatic cure again. Second one is postponing anger. Like I said, right? It's again, obviously takes some technique. Uh, one of the things I've learned the hard way is whenever you're upset, don't write. Don't write emails in office. Okay, somehow it will come out. Only when you're cool, that's when you write a mail. You may think I've done a good job, but no, the other person will get it. That is how our feelings are. So the genuine feelings are caught by everybody. Our heart, it's like uh, electromagnetic waves it emits. So some people you get in their company, you feel good, right? Their vibes are good, this you say. Some people you say, oh, something is not right about them. So integrity and having genuineness is very important in every relationship. If you're upset and you're trying to put on a face, it will not fly for a while. And that is why I say, 
we need to be in touch with our reality that is a very very important skill to have with mindfulness if you are not in touch with our reality we are putting on a face just be, because you want to look good or we want to you know for whatever reason it's not a sustainable game plan people will see through it everybody is smart enough beyond a point your vibe will start defining you same goes with anger as well and we have to manage it we cannot let it be there and you know do something so postpone it or just just hold off don't don't express it especially don't write letters okay and don't unfollow or do all that stuff as well on facebook and other things you may want to regret it later so postpone it for a while the third one is uh, deep breathing pranayama uh, we have uh, devi today she is going to talk about this aspect a little bit it's a very interesting concept uh, we were traveling and uh, she brought in that concept and i really liked it okay this is very interesting technique and uh, in fact uh, there's another technique i think i'll let her talk about it in a, in a short while from now Uh, that is a holistic way of tackling angle when we get into the long term strategies to do dismantle it as well so that that helps as well if you do it few rounds you can you can practice it and see it for yourself just do few rounds next time your uh, emotion starts surging and see the impact it has within those few minutes it will have that 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 much how powerful it is reverse counting to 20 somebody was saying i've never tried it so uh, but i think those kind of because it's again related to introducing that gap we talk about right puffing cheeks with water try that it's pretty interesting but just make sure it's not too cold or too hot okay they're not good for our teeth then uh, picking up alternate activities long walk listening to music washing utensils now that is i've heard that option as well those are some of the triggers techniques you can use maybe there might be a lot of other ways as well but here we are treating the symptom not the actual problem here they are all symptomatic cures but i said if you can actually get better at symptomatic cures as well over time it will become our mindset and still you will be able to manage it really well it's it's it can become your mindset so that is a good part of it the key thing is the permanent cure addressing the root itself it's better to go to the root cause right even in our industry they say what is the rca root cause root cause for it because that is how we want to tackle it once and for all so let's look at some of the permanent cures stop stay silent or go away okay that is the first thing uh, we spoke about this concept um, and when if we have uttered a word stop there only okay and the analogy we looked at is when a lady is cooking food and her sari or cloth catches fire she puts it off immediately just like this and even when we are eating and something comes uh, a kanker like they say or stone comes in our mouth we don't keep on chewing on it we immediately reject it same way first of all stop if you can do that that's the best thing stay silent or go away avoid it if you can't do that if something has already happened then stop that point only as soon as you gain con you know that sense that hey i've started getting into that trap of you know becoming this that dog who was picking up fight and felt obligated to respond to this person so we need to immediately get into that mindset the second one is the most important one where you are you have to work on your, yourself okay this is the most important technique and tool not just for anger for every material affliction the buck stops at us right we talk about global peace peace by peace if individually can attain peace the global peace would be a natural consequence of it so same thing for anger it is very important to reflect on yourself that will give us a sustainable fix around it and help us fast track our growth on spirituality as well and what does it entail it entails accepting own faults that's the first thing we don't accept that we we walk around with a certificate that we are fine the other person has a problem or the second argument is all right i may be having a problem but i am at least better than the other person that at least will come these are the only two arguments you can have whenever you pick up something you are and it's your pride talking when you start finding faults because of this i became angry in that person it's your pride talking because you have already accepted you are better than that person that's a big problem and understanding that we are all driven by our self interest so if your self interest gets impeded it may manifest in some way as well it's just a matter of fact that somebody else self interest for because of uh, you know for some reason we are 
we are you know surrounded or got uh, uh, got this kind of a setting that we are in, stuck with that kind of a person in this a particular situation we have to give them that they are also driven by their self interest and i might have impeded their self interest it may be a temporary phenomena but if if it comes to my self interest also i may end up making somebody angry as well so we have to understand the philosophy behind it we all are driven by a self interest and whenever it is impeded it is bound to cause conflicts if two people are spiritually mature or otherwise then this uh, thing can go on because that uh, healthy balance of credits and withdrawals is maintained but if it is not that conflicts are bound to happen that is the very nature of this world so we have to do that reflection and then ongoing investment in building spiritual assets that's a key thing so the topmost goal of life is inner growth and if you think of inner growth every opportunity in life is actually can be diverted towards um and doing you know getting better at yourself that inner growth is always an opportunity in every opportunity you can't complain then that complaint mindset itself will go away right that there is a beautiful uh, doha from kabir ji he said that nindak niere rakhiye angan kuti chhavaye bin sabun pani bina nirmal karat suhaye so if you have a critic or somebody who ticks you off keep him in your you know place and have him okay go on and criticize me and if you keep on silently tolerating it very good very good carry on then it will really fast track your growth but for us are we cannot take even a small word right? somebody tells us you are stupid or idiot we're like oh, how dare that person say that to me that happens automatically we cannot tolerate that right there was a joke swami ji is like <laughs> seeing you saying that a guy uh, the boy he goes with his mom and uh, to the market and uh, they were going around the market and he says mom but by the way where are all the idiots so mom said which what idiots are you talking about he said i came with dad you know few days back and every second person he was seeing he was saying idiot 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 right so it can become your mindset when you get but the, when you actually look at it if somebody is criticizing you and says you words that do not appeal to uh, you know appeal to your intellect if you simply tolerate it simply tolerate it you know increase your forbearance around it without becoming a doormat of course these are the ways you can actually harness your spiritual um, reservoir of power within you then you are insulating yourself from peace you can turn your keys right whenever they want so spiritual assets and then mindful diet yoga they play a huge role so you cannot expect to shun anger and eat chilies at the same time okay it will be counterproductive so let me bring in that uh, aspect as well and uh, we have uh, devi here and she wanted to talk about that sir that you should definitely bring in that perspective it's a very important perspective on pranayam and this aspect how it can actually help us manage it over time and starts um, you know taking addressing it right at the root not just at a surface level yes devi over to you you want to talk a little bit about that radhe radhe devi ji thank you Radhe Radhe Sanjati and Radhe Radhe Neeti Ji, thank you for this wonderful, uh, interesting point and making it so clear about the mind and how to manage the anger, and not just anger, any emotions that can irritate us and make us very uh, not ourselves, but influenced by these waves of. Uh, emotions or thoughts that are not necessarily true to ourselves. So, with that, yes, uh, thank you um, for bringing me in here. I would love to talk about a little bit of logic on the cause, the the root cause, and a little bit more of this permanent cure that we have that our scripture has given that our gurus rishis munis all these uh, has given from straight out of divine knowledge straight out of scriptures and but we haven't sometime really tap upon it so that we are um, you know we are wondering still wondering uh, why and how so i would like to 
bring up first of all the aspect of permanent cure if we want to really look into managing the mind which is including angers and uh, any other emotions uh, we first we would like to understand what we are made out of what kind of the instrument the science of subjective the subjective science because yoga is subjective science the science about this body mind life uh, especially the whole physical part so yes we all functioning with the energy as we um, understand this body consume energy so that we have energy to do all the activities the first energy that is required that require is the movement the movement the restfulness the exercise the asana without moving we can probably live for a long time but the body who will not we might not function without moving might not uh, have a healthy body as well as the mind if we don't move or have that flow right we'll come to the mind in a, in a second but the body if we look at the physical aspect now another energy that we have that we necessarily have to consume is the aspect of sleep the body will not survive without sleep maybe uh, for 14 days or however, however many days but again we will have a very uh, disturbed mind and uh, unhealthy body without sleep so th these are form of energy that we need now the third part is where diet come from mindful diet so again our consumption food and water are a form of energy that the body needs we cannot argue with these uh, points it's very fundamental so if we don't have food we might survive maybe seven days or more than that if we are yogis and have established but again uh, we will not have a healthy body along with that what Nathan is talking about diet is not only uh, we we don't well, not only what we consume and how we consume it's really a matter of what we consume how we consume as well uh, because it's of these energies are the energy that we gather somehow becomes this body this mind and this uh, life uh, to to really go about so food uh, yes another aspect that i would like to explain is the body needs the most and it's without it it cannot survive maybe all not only not even a few minutes is the breath. So that's when pranaya comes in. Uh, so most importantly, we might not able to control much of the emotions, but if we do pranayama and control our breath and understand a little bit about the science of breathing, uh, we might be able to, not we might be, we will be, especially Krishna say that it's possible, right? Even. Uh, in Bhagavad Gita, when Ajun asks how to control the mind, it's so hard as it, as this control the wind. So, so these pranayam aspect, all these are giving uh, diet, how to sleep, how to walk, how to how you know, uh, just like Ajun wonder how does one work uh, that establish the realized person? How does he work? How how does he walk? How does he eat? How does he what does he do? Some sort of thing. So, um, first of all, mindful diet. Let's look into that a little bit uh, more. When you you cannot expect to not angry when you uh, eat and keep eating chili. So in Ayurveda, we have these six tastes that uh, goes along with our mindset and also the dosha to balance. We have sweet, we have sour, bitterness, estrogen, salty, and 
as the all those okay, bitter and the sour sour bitter do we cover everything and also as, as sour estrogen spicy so these uh taste also directly relationship to emotions and the doshas so spice as we all know it's a uh pitta aspect if you're it's a heat the quality of heat the quality of uh, so it's good the intensity is good if you want to get things done but in terms of mind and emotion the how can we not angry but also have the same time have that intensity to still work and complete the task right this is the arts of things that we're looking looking about so the logic another point is the logic of this taste and how to manage mindfully manage your doshas and the taste and the logic of vegetarian vegetarians so being vegetarians because again uh, being the physical science of herbivore non carnivores if we eat meat not only it affects the emotions not only we gather the karmic and emotion part of the the animal so also where it was consumed that can affect our mind as well so a few points in mindful diet uh, the logic of being uh, vegetarian vegetarian and the six tastes that we have to balance most of the time we don't we don't have this balance in these tastes and we don't really know or care uh, end up caring it so what happened is we lack of let's say bitterness in our diet we look for the bitterness in the wrong substance such as coffee chocolates cocoa instead of bitter melon <laughs> Uh, some leafy greens all right so it's instant uh, gratifications comes then the same thing with the mind we got sugar blast mind we get anger mind with all these spice and the wrong diet that we have so very important um, diet could be a very big long subject but that I'm only here for two to three minutes so uh, contemplate on this aspect and make sure your diet is well as well nourishing with sattvic food um, and balance between the tamasic and rajasic food they recommend 80% should be sattvic food very nourishing very refreshing full of pranic uh, energy and 10% tamasic 10% rajasic food which is which you cook with onions and call it if you do so that uh, that is fine they said now pranayam aspect it's is the sadhana is the kriya that lots of uh, master realize master guru shri maharaji himself give, have given kripalu prakriya practice for us and there's a reason for that because the breath really can directly uh, channel and help with the mind management and anger so when you get angry if you really can remember your breathing take a deep breath in and long exhalation and if you can remember and if you really have to step out or really change the instant energy do the anulom vilom if you know if you know the anulom vilom simply just start start doing that will uh, have to will will feel that gap of requirement gap of being in the role and being above the role of your the situation that you're dealing with hopefully so in the long be long pranayam uh, at first of course you have to remember it in the situation to do it but if you practice this regularly that space will be always provided right the space of um, we playing the character of all these lifetime doing our action and duties so pranayam is the most powerful uh, tools for this um, when it comes to mind and uh, anger management 
So with that, I think um, uh, the times is uh, with that. I uh, very thank you for letting me share this, and I would like to emphasize just these two points of diet and pranayam being the very important tools and energy that we require not only for physical, also for the mind. Thank you. Wonderful, um, Devi. Beautiful inputs. Um, and if you if you really liked, you can uh, you may want to check out uh, some of the daily yoga asanas and uh, all the meditations and the pranayams that she does. I think you can check out her schedule. But um, it's a very important aspect of it, uh, like she so nicely explained. If the diet and our breathing has a direct correlation with our emotions. In fact. Anulom Vilom is called Nadi Shodhan. So when you are up, you know, when you are having a different emotion, you see, typically we breathe from one nostril only. You would see it will balance it out. And, and that negativity that you're feeling, that surge of emotion, it will help you calm it down and you can expel it out with each, each one of your breath. And same thing for food, as she said, if I were to give an elevator speed on that, you know, 20 second tamasic and rajas, rajasic food is anyway going to fuel your desire. And where does this desire lead you? Either fulfillment or so those emotions of desire, material acquisitions, enjoyment, bhog, they get fueled when we resort to rajasic food. And tamasic intoxicating is anyway going to give us, tap into our lower energy more. So the more sattvic, nourishing, fresh food that we have will keep our emotions more healthy as well. And anyway, our scriptures say, jaisa an, vesa man. Because whatever, think of it, anything that you eat, whether it's a cookie, whether it's a chocolate, whether it's a bread or something fresh vegetable, one third of it will become your body in a short while. It become your body. One third of it will become your mind. What you have eaten is going to become your mind. And one third of it is obviously expelled by the body. So anything that is you are putting inside is going to dictate the consciousness of your mind and this emotions that we are talking about. All are fueled from mind. That is how important it is. And Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, you know, when Arjuna asks him, Chanchalam hi mana Krishna, that this mind is so obstinate, you know, I cannot control it. Wind can be controlled, but mind cannot be. When Krishna says, Asanchayam hi mahabhaho, manaha dur nigraham chalam, he said, yeah, I agree with you. You know, it's uh, difficult, but not impossible, he says. And then he goes on to say, Abhyasena tu kante vera gena chakriyate. With practice and detachment, you can actually control it. So we do have all the tools available for us. Um, obviously, it has to be supplemented with holistic outlook. You have to build spiritual assets in your day-to-day -day life. We have to supplement it with the right kind of diet and thoughts and the practices that our scriptures tell us, right? These yoga, these are not hocus-pocus things. They actually add value to your life and tangible value that you would realize over a period of time and we continue doing it. So hopefully we took a holistic look at it. Any questions or discussion topics? I can see a few hands raised. I know we have less over time, but I'll let Sandhya, depending upon her time availability. What do you yeah, want? So, uh, first of all, there's just one comment from Seema Ji about pranayam. She says that the speed of breathing is directly proportional to the speed of our thoughts in our minds. Yes, and if you breathe really fast, right, you're shortening your life. Okay, I have this theory that our life, our age is not fixed. Our breaths are fixed. So the shallower our breaths are, <laughs> the quicker we are consuming our ears. So it has to be a yogic breath. Okay? Eventually, what Deviji said is going to take you to a yogic breath. Where just by breathing pattern, you can make out this person, you know, how spiritually elevated it is. We are not I mean, But finally, your breathing has becomes more stabilized and longer breaths that we practice mindfully in yoga. That becomes part of your personality. Shallow breaths, just nervousness and not good for body. Yes, uh, any announcements, uh, Sandhya? We can take a few questions. and. Uh, yeah, announcements, mainly two announcements. One is about the camp, which is in June. I have posted the link in the chat and the uh, attendance tracker. So please provide your feedback, comments uh, in that. Thank you. So uh, Attendance tracker, yeah. And uh, Shamji, this is how you move to Dallas, okay? You start with a family camp. That was a question you were asking. So you come to family camp, do a Leela with us. We'll make you a character that you're most comfortable with. And that's how you start with Dallas. And, and finally, we can work out something, how you can move here. 
you have just a lot of seva and lot of festivals so you'll never be bored trust me okay okay so kumar ji radhe radhe <clears throat> radhe radhe nitin ji radhe radhe sandhya ji and radhe radhe everyone a uh, very happy evening and uh, morning to all of you so <clears throat> couple of things i am looking forward to this camp uh, nitin ji so uh, you know i was very uh, this one about flying uh, before but now even my daughter has you know shown that it's not you know it's not scary flying you know i was like thinking i you know i have to wear the mask all the time and all that stuff but yeah i think uh, i'm going to come there uh, it would be great to visit you folks um so having said that um this is coming from a very angry young guy angry. to a less angry you were imp- uh, you were inspired with amita bachchan right angry young man exactly that's what i'm saying from a very angry young guy who thought it was cool to be angry okay. to a less angry and better manage anger guy young guy right now i still call myself young okay so <laughs> i'll tell you the things which um, my experience right so a lot of things you know like bhagavad gita came in, came into my life big time god's grace swami ji's grace bhagavad gita's grace right then yoga and pranayama right uh, yoga i'm not too good at that i need to you know do better deep breathing has really helped me uh, sometimes i forget but you know uh i walk out in case if there is some kind of a um, this one i just walk out for some time and cool myself really helps the food being vegetarian you know i was eating eggs before but you know i was trying to convince my son not to eat meat so i said you know i i cannot tell him if i'm myself eating eggs so i stopped eating eggs he did not stop eating uh meat but you know i'm happy that i stopped eggs and i'm a, i'm actually a pure vegan person too uh, i don't drink milk for health reasons because i don't know you know like these cows you know uh, what they eat and all that stuff even though i did, you know drink um, i used to drink um, organic milk anyways so that is one thing which sattvic food surely helps my i think uh, once i start using black pepper i have to use less of it that you know instead of using red chili Uh, and green chilies it has helped me so that's one thing which i found now there is a huge relationship between hunger and anger if people have noticed it when you're hungry you will get more angry right uh, let's and any situation any small situation you're really hungry but you know you've not had your food waiting and then some situation comes up and then it just you just burst out in anger right it has happened to me several times and my grandmother used to say if anyone was angry hey have has this person eaten their food right so uh, you know and now i didn't think much about it at the time but now i see i keep food always prepared in the refrigerator so that i can pick up something never you know go really hungry so that really helped me um most of it you know what i you know one i learned that i should not be proud right so i was thinking like <laughs> I think I really got control of it. One, just one uh, half a minute. So I said, I'm so happy I've done that. And then God is, you know, he's a strange person, right? He's a, you know, God's must be crazy. There was a movie like that as well. So he, this guy has gotten pride. So he gave me additional troubles to kind of, you know, test my anger. So do not be proud. That is some of the lesson I learned. Thanks, Nitin Radhe Radhe. beautiful point kumar ji i agree uh, in fact there was a study conducted data scientists if there are any data scientists they'll be able to relate to it that uh, the judges when they were to pronounce statements uh, sentences rather before lunch they were more harsher okay and then after lunch they used to be more lenient in fact it is statistically proven why because they'll be upset they are they want to eat food and after they eat food eating food they feel better so yeah those kind of things can actually contribute to anger as well kids do that all the times but we are grown up kids right we do it as well we don't realize it uh, and that's why they say machines will not have that problem a machine will just look at the data it's not lunch time and you know machine will rush through it great point so we need to first of all mindfully 
understand our own triggers what are our triggers you know food is one of it of course and so the moment we start getting into from green zone to amber zone that's where we need to nip it in the bud before it becomes red now if we go from green to red frequently then it's a problem we need to be better at it of course okay let's take maybe a few more i can see three hands raised four hands raised but yeah can everyone be quick and like just wrap in 30 seconds to one minute yes i think okay. we don't want to take her she's a person so let's really do that quickly uh so ramya ji radhe 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 I just uh, needed an information, uh, like you said, Deviji, uh, uh, kind of uh, the pranayama and the yoga, like where can I find it? I, I wanted to know. Deviji has some siddhis also. She's already raised her hand to answer your question. So over to Deviji to answer her question and you can share the link as well. Yes, I'm happy to, happy to uh, help with you. I'll share a few links. And if you have any more question, I will also... I share the contact for you to text. Yes, thank you so much. Wonderful. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, we'll provide you all the resources, Shri Amaji. Don't worry. And um, our sessions are wonderful, so do do avail those. Um, it's at a very convenient time for you as well. Let's quickly take uh, two more questions, and then we'll wrap it up. Well, there's too much notes, but let me just say a few things from my own experience. Yeah, real quick, Patmaji. Uh, then I'll, I'll just I'll just hold on like for another time. Um, no, no, one, please go. Uh, please go ahead. Um, it's a practical tool that I wanted to share. A practical tool. Uh, it might be en encompassing the same thing that you're saying. Whenever we realize why are we angry, and then there, the for at least for me, right? When you're faced with the situation where there is um, insecurities or whether there is a struggle of the power, where there is a struggle of money, where there's a struggle of attachments. And the root cause, at least I can speak from my own experience, the root cause uh, is our inability to not know exactly what is that that we need to do in that situation. And we feel compelled that, that something needs to be done in that situation and, and we feel very helpless. And in that state of mind where we're very helpless, the most familiar emotion that we connect with is an anger. And then I think that's what comes out very much. And this is by my experience of studying a lot of people around me, not my own self, that when you're exposed, when you're faced with a situation where you are challenged with either with somebody being better than you, either a power or money or intellect, knowledge, whatever you call it, that is their way to actually show the closest emotion that they know is, is anger. So it is very important not only to understand and recognize why you are in that situation, but also to put yourself in a situation, what is that they might be feeling? And then that really helps many times to understand that this is what they might be going to. And I pause because there is a lot of stuff, but I just wanted to share that. And then um, one thing that we all have a right to is that that space and the freedom to take that our spirituality to a different level where we can calm our mind and that means within that relationships also you have to grab that time and space and sadhana of your own which is yours so that you can work on yourself very true beautiful points and i look forward to your blog on this topic because i know you will have much more to contribute in that so thank you so much padmaji do we have time sandhya or are we good you, we can be real quick with the two hands, I guess. It's okay. Real quick means uh, 30, 40 seconds each. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Radhe, Radhe, Rahul ji. Radhe, Radhe. Nitin ji, I had a question on the slide where we were talking about the uh, permanent cure and working on ourselves. So can, are we including that point also where we are trying to diverge or di change the direction of our desires from material world to the spiritual world? Because... Right point and that is that will come into material the permanent cure i'll add that point as well where we are dovetailing our anger anger is an emotion we can dovetail it and desire also we can dovetail it beautiful point i think that will go into that permanent cure part of it as well obviously with bhakti and building spiritual asset we'll get more wonderful point Rahul. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. um pragya ji Radhe, Radhe. 
Radhe Radhe and Nitin Sandhya and everyone, your beautiful point. And Rahul Ji just mentioned what I wanted to mention that Maharaj Ji says he could be bura nahi hai. He just have to change the direction. So anger is uh, also an emotion, unmanaged emotion, a negative emotion. Um, and diet and uh, breathing and pranayam is tools. And root plan on God is that something that will go to the root of the problem and which will actually purify our heart and gradually, gradually uh, be able to get that practicing the pause also we will get that objectivity also and since our goal is different the direction is changed uh yeah slowly slowly we will start getting unaffected uh, by the unmanaged emotions of the people around us yeah yes. uh, thank you yes. Radhe, Radhe. Yes. i managed to be with sandhya <laughs> thank you Radhe, Radhe. Thank you, Radhe, Radhe. Yeah, that's why bhakti is called watering the root you do bhakti Anger, anger, everything will run away. Okay, you don't have to do anything else. Great point, great discussion. We'll continue our discussion tomorrow. We'll pick up something interesting and uh, let's do our closing prayers for the day and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Let's quickly do that. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinah Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Makaschitukh Bhagavet Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Sandhya, for staying around. And thank you, Deviji, for the wonderful nuggets that you presented and all the participants as well. I look forward thank to you. Thank you. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe.